you know what's cooler than showing off your work online? Having a showcase itself be a show-off. And I think a 3D portfolio website does that because it's unique and it's cool. Now, this video will uh, talk about the details of its creation and it all starts with a contest between me and a friend of mine. So we were riding the bus late at night uh, during our semester break and suddenly my friend has uh, this idea for a website contest. We decided on, um, on a time frame between uh, the start of September and uh, middle of October, where our semester started. Uh, so we had limited time and uh, we shook hands on it and then we went at it. Uh, but first of all, who am I? Uh, I'm the creator and it's been a long time since uh, I've sat in front of a camera like this. Uh, the last time was when I made this weird Discord bot making off video where I wore a Discord mask. I wonder where it went. Hmm. Oh, what's this? Oh, would you look at that? Yeah, it's uh, more comfortable without one. I was wondering why people were giving me such strange looks. Well, now I know. So remember when I said earlier that I had time from the beginning of September to the middle of October? Well, that time was cut short, unfortunately. Um, I was busy making my Unreal Engine crash course in uh, September, and so I only got around to the website in uh, uh, late September. So I figured, okay, I'll spend two weeks on that, then I'll make this video, uh, which didn't quite work out, as you can tell by the upload uh, time. And uh, then I guess I'll make a prototype for my next game. So uh, that was the plan, at least, and... I needed to think of something that was both small in scope, but still impressive enough to win the contest. And I also wanted something that I could use after the contest was done. So I thought, what about a portfolio website? I don't really have one at the moment and uh, it would be kind of cool to, you know, show off the things that I've done. I've done a few things over the years and uh, do so in a way that's cool and unique. Therefore, you know, 3D portfolio website. And I was bouncing around some ideas of uh, what kind of uh, website I could make. Um, I thought of making like a website um, where, you're, um, where you're in an audience and it's, uh, you know, you're looking at a theater stage and you can basically select the kind of project you want to check out from a brochure menu and then the stage would change and it would show, you know, some, some cool trivia about one of my projects that you selected from the menu. But um, even though this seemed cool in my head, uh, when I got to uh, thinking about what I would put on the stage, I really had no idea. So, yeah, that uh, didn't quite work out. So uh, the next idea was, uh, why not make a museum for myself? And um, that idea stuck around. I quickly uh, narrowed it down to a single room and just uh, three of my projects. Uh, but before I could get to making this museum of mine, I had to learn the uh, technology that I was going to use. Um, my friend is the kind of guy, he discovers something cool and um, then he, he just has to make something with it. And in this case it was a, a framework called FreeJS and uh, as the name suggests, uh, it helps you to create a 3D stuff in, in a web browser. So I never worked with this before. I've worked with other 3D software, including modeling software like Blender and uh, game engines like Unreal. So I had some experience, but obviously there were going to be some unknowns with this new framework. So um, I did what I always uh, do, I opened the documentation and just copied code and uh, checked if it worked for myself. And it did. So what I essentially did in the beginning is um, I got a spinning cube to work, uh, which was kind of magical to see that in the browser. And then I just went ahead and added some 3D models that I had lying around. I had made this room, actually, uh, for the same friend of mine to show him how Blender works. And I just figured I'd throw this in there, see if it works, um, figure out how to do lighting, shadows, um, how to make 3D models rotate, how to even import them, get them to show up correctly, textures and all that. Uh, for the textures, I actually added a, <laughs> I added a donut above the room and um, 
The donut wasn't spinning, but the room was. And later on, I added controls to spin the camera around so I could uh, spin the camera with the room or opposite of the room. It was very trippy, but uh, you know, despite it being weird as hell, uh, it ended up being really useful to just get a grasp of the technology. Like, what can it do? Uh, what's different from the other technologies I've used before and so on and so forth. Uh, so after a day or two, I was pretty much ready to move on and create my museum. So first off, I went ahead and created a prototype actually in the Unreal Engine. So I figured I'd make a simple kind of L-shaped room so it's not just a boring box. And uh, then I kind of figured out where to put all the um, exhibition pieces. And I went with uh, three exhibitions, so uh, one for my uh, very first crash course that actually started my channel, and then one for an app I made, uh, Help Me Decide, it's on the Play Store if you want to check it out, and uh, one for my latest crash course that I mentioned earlier, the uh, Unreal Engine crash course. So I drew an overhead map at first and then kind of translated that into 3D, and because I've worked with Unreal for so many years, it was pretty easy to just you know, create a prototype and uh, figure out how things should look in 3D. Obviously, I, I knew that uh, my website wouldn't look quite as pretty as something made in Unreal does, but that was all right. I was just trying to figure out, you know, the proportions of things, where to put things, camera angles, and I even added some logic to uh, where I could switch between uh, cameras um, with my arrow keys so I could see, you know, where I should position the cameras in the uh, in the final website because I had this idea that um, I kept the brochure menu around from the theater idea and I wanted to have kind of a fade in fade out transition as you can see here and then it would fade to a new camera angle and uh, you could switch between a few camera angles and uh, while I kept the exhibition pieces uh, merely as color-coded blocks, I actually thought um, of the uh, textures that I wanted my room to have, and I added marble floors because my vanity has no bounds. So after I was done um, creating a little prototype room in Unreal, I went ahead and modeled it in Blender. So because it had been a while uh, since I used Blender, um, it took me a little bit to get uh, reacquainted with it. And the first uh, rendition of the room I made ended up being quite horrible. Uh, it didn't even really work in the browser when I tried to import it. Like, it showed up, but without lighting, no matter what I did. So uh, after trying around with this for a few hours, I just gave up and remodeled the room. And uh, that one was a lot better and also worked with lighting. And then I went ahead and models, uh, modeled like the signs for the museum. I wanted to put some text on there. Um, I went ahead and uh, created a little showcase display because I wanted to put some 3D models in there. Um, I actually exported some 3D models from Unreal and imported them into Blender like this uh, mannequin and this uh, beveled cube. And last but not least, I also added some picture frames. So Blender has this really cool feature where you can just uh, type out text and it will create a 3D model for you, which saved me a ton of time because modeling text just doesn't sound like a lot of fun. And um, for the pictures, I just had to import those as textures and kind of align them so they uh, fit the picture frames. And after that was done, um, after everything was set up in the room, I exported it and um, imported that into my uh, FreeJS project. And uh, yeah, to my surprise, it looked quite good. Maybe it looked that good because I uh, had actually gone to a museum for like a little uh, research trip and also just to get outside every once in a while. And uh, I could just kind of see uh, which elements a museum has. And that museum I went to had a lot more uh, exhibition pieces uh, that would have taken a long time to model. And that also wouldn't have been as fitting with, you know, the kind of projects that I was putting on display there. Um, so yeah, I went for a pretty simple setup with just a few um, signs, picture frames, and um, a few 3D models. Simple enough. So after I had successfully imported that 3D model in, onto my website, I then went ahead and uh, set up the camera angles that I had planned out before in my Unreal prototype. 
And I also added some simple logic to switch between them and um, already the website was coming together pretty nicely. So in the beginning, just like I had with my prototype, I just switched through camera angles uh, with keys, but in the end uh, I wanted to have, you know, this brochure menu so I could um, click links in there and it would take me to the respective screen. And um, for that I was of course still missing the menus and I was also missing a brochure design, so uh, I went ahead to Canva, the uh, software I use for my thumbnails. And I designed a um, cover for the brochure, which I was going to use for a main menu that first pops up when you load onto the website and from there you can transition into the museum. That was my plan. And then I also added a, uh, a second page for the brochure where all my uh, projects are listed and uh, you have some buttons that you can click to uh, switch the camera angles around. And while those designs looked quite nice, unfortunately they didn't translate 100% to my final website and that's because uh, I had to recreate them with CSS, um, the, the language used to um, uh, make layouts on the web. And um, these uh, layouts uh, need to be responsive. So not everyone has the same screen size. Uh, some screens are smaller, wider. Uh, you know, some screens are a totally different aspect ratio, like uh, imagine phones. Um, website looks completely different on a phone than it looks on a uh, computer screen because computer screens are wide but phones are rather tall, so yeah, uh, lots to consider there. Um, I did the best I could but I, I really don't like CSS. I don't know what is, what's it about it but I just, I just find it very cumbersome to use. But I did my best and uh, after half a day of uh, coding away at it, I had something that uh, looked decent and um, resized decently enough. Uh, I still don't think it looks great on phone. I don't even know if my website works on phone, but at this point I, I couldn't care less. I just wanted to have something that worked. Oh yeah, and I also had uh, help with it. Um, namely uh, from, from a nice pal I called uh, ChatGPT. Uh, without him, I would have given up much sooner. Uh, so uh, props to this guy. Great work. So at this point, um, I had added a main menu. I had um, added some tr transitions, fading effects. I had my room, my camera angles, and the uh, menu functionality was in place. Um, then I added some sounds some street ambience, so it wasn't just complete silence. I'd even put this little uh, note in the um, main menu of the brochure, um, uh, headphones recommended, because I wanted to have sounds from the very beginning. It really brings everything together, I think, and um, yeah, I did that, added some menu sound effects as well, and uh, then I was pretty much ready to host my website. So for hosting, I figured I'd use the same uh, server hoster that I also used to host my Discord bot back in the day. You know, for this guy here. And um, I went ahead and bought a server again. Has been a while since I've done that. And um, after a little while of setting up uh, a web server on there to host my website and getting my website content from my main computer onto this uh, server, I finally got that one working. I also bought a uh, domain, uh, creator-museum.com from uh, Squarespace Domains and linked it up. That was actually the easier part. And uh, after a little while of waiting for DNS propagations, I don't know that uh, the... Don't ask me what that is. <laughs> after a little while of waiting for that, um, I finally could access my website and that was... Uh, that was a really magical moment. Just just typing in my URL that I bought, that I configured, and just seeing the website I made on my PC be there in the, in the browser, it was... Wow. Uh, one problem though, um, you might notice that uh, whenever you enter a website, you get this little HTTPS at the beginning, and that's the uh, protocol. And the S stands for secure, which is ideally what you want. And I only had HTTP, which is the old protocol. It's um, not really recommended to use in a lot of cases. And I wanted the I wanted the S to appear after the HTTP. 
and uh, that took another day of trying to figure out what I had configured incorrectly on the server side. So I tried everything with this web server that I set up that was, uh, you know, actually hosting the website and um, it's responsible for actually sending you the content whenever you um, enter that website. And I tried everything and in the end it just turned out to be a simple firewall issue. So um, half a day spent on uh, something that could have been resolved in five minutes. That's a life, I guess. And um, yeah, with that, I was pretty much done. I gotta say, it was, it seemed a lot cooler in my head than it actually ended up being, but um, I know that I'm my own worst critic, so, um, you know, considering I had nothing just one and a half weeks prior, and um, I managed to figure out this new technology, FreeJS, uh, you know, stick to my vision, not, um, you know, not plan too ambitiously and actually do something that was realistic um, given my experience and time. I gotta say, I'm, I'm proud of myself. Uh, there's still a lot of room for improvement, but now that I have the foundation, there's, yeah, I can only really go up. So, uh, yeah, you can visit the website right now under creator-museum.com and uh, give me feedback. So um, please be honest. Um, if you have to be harsh, then be harsh. That's the only way I can improve. I already got some uh, good feedback from uh, one of my friends. She's an artist, so she knows a lot more about, more about color than I do. And beforehand, I had um, red text on um, grayish signs, and she suggested why not make the text just black for better contrast. And also add a zoom function for people with smaller screens. So um, yeah, I'm very thankful for that kind of feedback. And um, I plan on improving the website some odd time in the future. So this video may be entirely outdated in a few months, depending on how soon I get to it. But yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed this little rambling story of mine. Uh, I gotta say, it was really difficult to sit down and make this video because um, I'm just not used to sharing anything of my creations with the world, really, but um, I'm happy I did now. And I gotta say, I have, I have my phone right here, and um, I, have a, I have a script, you can see it, but there's, there's some text on here. And uh, honestly, at some point, I just stopped looking at it, so yeah. Um, anyway, that's it for my uh, face reveal and uh, this video. So uh, until we meet again, uh, in whatever capacity, See you then, and Creator out.